Welcome back gurus. Today we are going to wrap up our second video of our two part series on building an air gapped environment. Um, at this point, I will already expect you to have your air gapped environment set up and to already have your registry built. Um, so if you have not built your registry yet up here in the top right, I will bookmark the link to my other video for the uh, building a registry. And that's where we're going to begin here. Um, after we have built the registry, now we are going to use these three systems, my SOAR system, my app post system, and my registry system to build this air gapped environment. Now at this point, I actually already have these pulled up in a putty session. So what I've got on my left hand side is my resilient box. On my right hand side is my app host. Now I've got these in a host only mode. So if I were to ping Google's DNS, I'm unable to hit that. However, I am able to communicate back and forth from both of these here. So you can see at this point that I can actually ping both of these systems and we have communication back and forth. However, my registry is out of, or is still in my regular environment so that I can reach outbound so I can set that up. What we're gonna go ahead and do at this point is actually bring that registry into my internal environment uh, or my, my air gapped environment and go ahead and get this all set up and configured to operate within that system. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, and now I have moved the server over um, to the app post environment as well and given it the IP of 172.16.160.130. So if I'm in here and I try to ping 8.8.8.8 again, I am unable to ping that. However, if I try to ping the app host, I can ping my app host. So we have now moved this registry into the air gapped environment um, just by switching that over on my VM. Now, of course, you may have to do this in a different way, um, but because I'm just running this on my local host here, I was easily able to move that network over. Um, but do whatever you have to do to get your registry moved over into that air gapped environment that you've already created. At this point, we have all of our systems in the air gapped environment. So now what we have to do is we're going to have to transfer a couple of files to that system. The first way we're gonna do this is actually by downloading the Rancher K3S files. Now, I will say that the K3S files that we need are going to be a specific version that is actually listed in the documentation. That documentation is listed in the documentation that I've created for this, which will be linked below in the description. Um, but as you see right here, it's going to tell us that we need to download these K3 images. So if we actually scroll back up to the top here, on procedure two, we need to download the air gapped images and we need to grab a specific version for what we are doing. I'm running this on version 49 over here. You may be trying to run this on a different version of your app host. So just keep that in mind when you're deploying this. And when I mean version 49, I believe that that would be version 1.13, um, which is the same as the, the uh, SOAR version of 49. So I actually have the link that you need to get that K3S air gap tar images in the documentation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump out to that GitHub and grab that data. Once we're out here, we're going to grab the, we've got the version that we need. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go ahead and grab the first tar file right here for our environment. So go ahead and grab that tar ball there and then we will jump back over to our system. All right, now that I have this downloaded on my local system here, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I've 
opened up a FileZilla session here to connect to my app host. I am then going to just copy these K3S air gap images directly over to the root file of my direct or my uh, app admin user. Now that that's been transferred over, now the next step in our list of things to do would be to actually create the directory file for my tar file here. And from there, we'll copy that tar file into there. All right, now that we're on the app post, we've got that file moved over. What we're gonna have to do is make the directory that that app, that that tar file is going to have to go into. So we will use these directions over here to copy this first command and we will create that directory. And then we'll move that file over and into the air gapped environment. We'll do that by doing a sudo mv for move the k3s file here and then the directory we just created. Now that we move that file, that tar file into the images directory, now we're gonna go ahead and grab the certifications that we're going to need off of the integration server that we created in our previous steps to create that registry. From here, we'll jump back over to our integration server and we will run the command SCP and then we're going to need to grab those certification files. And after we get the certification files selected, then we're going to say where we want to transfer this to. From here, we're going to use the app admin user and send it to our app post server. After we select the user at that IP address, we'll do a colon and then we'll send it to the server via whatever folder we want to save that in. For us, it's going to be the home and then the app admin folder, and we'll drop it right in that directory there. Now that we've got those files moved over, let's go ahead and jump back over to our app host. From here, if we do an ls command, we should see that all of those certs are there. Now, we don't actually need all of these certs. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're going to make the registry directory that we need, which is going to be in this location here. And then what we're gonna have to do is remove first the registry.csr, because we're not gonna need that one. Then what we can do is actually move those, move the rest of those registry certs on over into that directory we just created. Now you may not have had to do that extra step of removing the extra registry key there or certification, but at this point, um, because of the way that I chose to move it, uh, I had some extra files that I needed to get rid of. Next, what we're gonna do is actually run the move command to move the ca.cert file over into the trusted certs location. After that's moved over, if we do an ls, we can see we still have a few extra certs, so let's just go ahead and remove those at this point. Of course, you may not have to if you didn't move these extra ones over. Now you can see we don't have anything left, so we've got everything moved to where we need. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and update the CA Trust. Now that we've updated that CA Trust, our next step is to actually open the ETC hosts file and add a DNS entry for our system here. Now that we're in this file, we're gonna go ahead and hit I so that we can insert, and then we'll come down to create a new line. After we create this new line, we are going to use the template that we have down here to create our registry DNS. So the way we'll do that is first by pumping in the IP that we gave it, 
Then we're going to give it the DNS name that we want to use for this, which we created when we created the registry certs. After we get that line in, we'll go ahead and hit escape to get out of the insert, and then we'll give it a colon WQ for right quit. After we've created that host name in the DNS entry, now what we'll do is go ahead and ping registry dot company dot com and we can see that we're able to ping that IP there. Next what we're going to do is actually create the registry YAML directory and then create the registries file. So let's do that by doing sudo mkdir dash p and then we'll put this in the Etsy rancher and k3s location. From there, we'll do a new file. And now that we've got the new file, we'll go ahead and hit I to insert. And then we're going to use this code right here to actually copy and paste that into our new file over here. Now we're going to have to make a couple of modifications here. Of course, we are going to have to come up to the registry IP or the registry DNS name and update that to the DNS name that we just entered. Repeat that step for the endpoint of the Quay.io is one, one as well. And last but not least, we will have to change the config to look for the registry we just put in. At this point, we've got the registry configured. Now we just need to update the username and password for the password we set for our authorization uh, or authentication that is in our registry. You guys know I use the admin one and my super secret password, which was password one, two, three. At this point, we shouldn't need to change the file locations as that is standard for the directions that I created. However, if you did move those, you may have to change those yourself. After that, we'll go ahead and hit the escape button. We will do a WQ again with that colon in front for right quit and write this file out. Now, at this point, we've created our YAML file for our registries, and essentially what we're gonna be doing now is whenever the system tries to reach out to docker.io or to quay.io, it's actually going to be reaching out to our registry dot whatever the domain is. For me, company.com. For you, whatever you decided to put yours as. And then it's gonna use that username and password and the cert files that we transferred over to do the authentication to connect to that system. From here, we need to actually set a default pathway for our connection to know where to go. The way we're gonna do that is actually by using the interface that is ETHO, which we can find in IF config, right up here at the top. That's the interface that we're going to be connecting through because that's the, that's the one that has our IP to our network. The other ones are related to the Docker containers. So then what we're gonna do is we are going to create a root file for that interface. And the place that we do that is actually in the So it's going to be in our network scripts folder here, but we are going to have to create our own file called root dash and then whatever interface we're using. For us, since we're using the ETHO interface, we're going to go ahead and create it under ETHO. So we will go ahead and create that file. Again in here, we will hit I for insert, and then we are going to use this template down here to create the IP schema in our file. So I actually have a sample of it here, which will use the template that, I, or the, the IP address scheme that I'm going to be using. So we'll copy this. Of course, you change whatever you need for your environment. And then after that has been copied over and made into that file, we'll go ahead and do the escape 
colon wq for write quit and close that out and write that file. At this point, we've created that path or that route. And so now we will go ahead and restart our network manager. After we restart the network manager, now the next step will be to restart K3S. After both of those systems have been restarted, now we're going to have to verify that all of our pods are running. We can do that by running the sudo kube control git pods a. This is going to display all of our pods that we have available to us. Now you can see that all of our pods are running and two of the three are actually ready. If you need to run that command again, and that should verify that that last one is now up and running as well. Now we can see that all of the pods are up and running and ready to go. So now the next step will be to actually establish the pairing. However, a quick troubleshooting technique, if your pods are not up and running, you can use the kube control rollout restart deployment deployments dash n kube dash system. Now I know that's a lot and I threw a lot at you real quick. That command actually is in my documentation, but what that'll do is actually restart any of those systems or all of those systems really so that it will tear down those containers and try to rebuild them. That should help resolve that problem if you've done everything right up till this point. If you have not, please go back and make sure that your container has those containers that we pulled from the rancher system. Now that we've got all this set up, what we're gonna have to do is actually set up that pairing. Fairly simple, straightforward. You're just gonna do the pairing just like you normally would do, um, but I will walk you through that real quick just so you can see it. First, we're gonna have to log into our system. After we're logged into the system, then we will jump into our admin settings. Looks like my admin settings are covered here, so let's go ahead and jump in this way. From here, we're gonna go ahead and log in, or jump over to our apps tab, which is at the very end. And now what we're gonna have to do is actually create our app host. So we'll hit add for the app host. We'll give it a name, whatever name you would like. Then we're going to get the connection codes down here, the connection information down here. What we're gonna do here is just go ahead and hit that copy to clipboard, but we're not gonna leave the screen. You may want to actually copy this to another uh, document, um, like a text file, just in case you were ever needed again. Otherwise, you would actually have to do a complete renew of that setup um, to get that established again. So. After we've grabbed this information, now we're gonna jump back over here into our app host and run the command sudo manage app host with a capital A and a capital H, and then we're going to do install. Once it gets to this point, it's gonna ask us for the pairing information. We can go ahead and just paste what we already copied directly into here and then hit enter. It'll start the installation here and get the connection all established. But one thing you may get asked is if you want to trust the certification that it's using. We will get that here in just a second. Once we finish this, the installation will say that it succeeded down here at the very bottom. So now we are good to go. We can go ahead and complete our setup over here. And we will just need for this to wait to be paired. However, while we're waiting for this to be paired, let's go ahead and finish setting up our registry. We're gonna have to make a couple of config changes so that it can actually point the app host to the registry for downloading apps. So what we can do is do sudo manage app host registry dash dash registry to name our registry. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to do the host name or the IP. In this case, we're gonna be using a host name for because that's what our cert has on it. So we will do registry.company.com. And then if you, had an, uh, if you had a port that you wanted to use, of course you can use that here, but we're just going to jump into the user and give it that admin user. 
At this point, it'll ask you for the password for that registry. And of course, we all know my password. Now you can see that we have successfully configured this and we are good to go on getting that set up. The last thing we're gonna need to do is actually define what that DNS for that registry is. And we'll do that by doing a sudo manage app host DNS. And then we're going to set our IP address to the IP of our system. And we're going to define the host name here as our registry, just like that. Now that we've added our registry to both the registry and the DNS of the app host, now we should be good to go to actually go and deploy an app once that pairing has been completed. So let's jump over there. All right, at this point, you can see that we have our air gapped environment connected. It's in a running state and it's only pulling about 5% usage from our uh, app host. So now let's go ahead and deploy our first app. To keep it simple, I've gone ahead and selected the data tables utilities app here. Um, that is going to be a local one. It doesn't need to reach outside of our system and reach any other systems. It's just going to be reaching back into our resilient system here. So let's go ahead and get this installed. After we get this installed, now we need to get it configured. And in here, because I am using a self-signed cert, I am going to go ahead and just do CA file equals false and comment out that first line. Now, of course, in your own environment, you may not want to do this. You may want to copy that cert over and use it for your environment. Um, feel free to do that. But what I'm gonna do here is just do the CA file equals false so that I can verify that this is up and running. From here, after we get this configured, I'll scroll down, I'll select my air gapped host that I built, and I will run my test configuration. Now this will take a second to run, but when it comes back, we should see that it was able to pull this container down and run it successfully without any problems. All right, and just like that, we have a successful test. That means that the container was able to be pulled down, successfully ran, and we verified that this config file is working here. So now we're good to go to start using this integration. We can go ahead and save and push these changes. And then last but not least, deploy that app. And now that app has been deployed and is currently ready for use. So we are good to go. We now have a perfectly air-gapped environment. Now, at this point, if you do need to add any, uh, any additional integrations or anything like that to your environment, you will have to pull that registry out of the air-gapped environment. You'll have to update those with whatever or any apps that you want to add to that, and then you'll have to add that registry back to your air-gapped environment. That way, you can keep that separation, um, but continue to have the most up-to-date apps. So at this point, we have gone ahead and created the registry. After creating the registry, we've copied over all of our registry or all of our containers into that registry, and we have moved that registry into our air-gapped environment, established the connection for our air-gapped environment, and shown that the apps are now running just fine in that air-gapped environment. I hope that this helps. I hope that it benefits everybody here and that everybody understands how that they can set up this within their own environment, whether it's for testing purposes or even for a production environment that you have to have your systems completely isolated. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you guys will comment below if you guys have any other concerns or questions about your environments and ask questions. I definitely appreciate those. It might help me lead to another video like we see here. I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you guys next time.